Hi and welcome to the Apple videos. In this video I'm going to run you through the iTunes concept. So we're going to take a look at how the software works just so you have a better understanding. And that's really going to help you when we go through the actual iTunes software and it won't sound so strange to you, especially if you're new to the Apple world. So if you don't know already, the iTunes store is where you go to buy your music, movies, books, TV shows, you can get podcasts from there. You can get a whole host of things from the iTunes store. Now, if you have an iPhone, you will also see iTunes on your iPhone. You'll also see iTunes on your iPad. And if you've got a Mac, you'll also find iTunes on your Mac. If you don't have a Mac, if you've got a PC, and by PC I mean a computer with Microsoft Windows installed, then you'll need to install iTunes manually and you just download it from the Apple website. But what does that mean? Does that mean that the iTunes store is on your device now? No iTunes software just allows you to access the iTunes store. So from that perspective, it may sound a little bit confusing. So if we take, for example, our phone, you can use the iTunes software on your phone to access the iTunes store. And it's all seamless. It all looks like the same thing. And then you can just purchase some music, for example, and download it to your phone. And you can also do the same with movies. However, with movies, you don't need to download them. You can just stream them to your phone. So what does downloading and streaming mean? Well, the difference being, if you think about it in an old school perspective, when you buy something from the video store, for example, you need to bring it home. And that's what downloading means. You can purchase it on the iTunes store and it will stay up there in the iTunes store. And you can watch a movie from the iTunes store on your phone, but you haven't really brought it home. You're more or less projecting the show to your device or computer, but it doesn't stay on your device. It remains up on the iTunes store where you can watch it as often as you like, but each time you do watch it, you use the same amount of data download as you would if you downloaded the program originally. So if you're going to watch it more than once, it makes sense to download it, right? Plus, if you stream your show, you will always need an internet connection. So unless you know what I'm talking about, you might not know that you're actually streaming a show. And I'll show you how all of this works within iTunes. The other little gotcha to all of this is that every time you download a movie and store it on your device, be it a phone or an iPad, you consume the memory of that device. And as you can see here, we can check those stats within iTunes. We can also check it on our phone. So if you've got lots of pictures on your device and you want to download lots of high definition movies, and let's say for example you've got the 16 gigabyte model, you may only be able to store three high definition movies on your device. So from that perspective it may make sense to purchase a device with more memory, a 32 or a 64 gig model. So it really does require a little bit of management if you're going to use iTunes to consume a lot of movies. So this is where people can get themselves into a bit of a pickle. Let's say, for example, you purchase a show on your phone. It's best to ensure that you have a Wi-Fi connection or it uses your phone's network plan to download that show. And that's fine if you have a large download limit on your phone. And you can learn a little bit more about data downloads through the Windows 8 videos that I've created. But in this example, let's say that we purchase something on our phone, we can either stream it to our phone or we can download it. If you choose to download that show, it doesn't automatically mean that it's going to download on your computer and on your iPad. So you might download it on your iPhone and it may still stream on your iPad and on your computer. So you need to check those settings. You don't want to be in a situation where your household is streaming in some areas and downloading shows over here because you could end up with extra download charges. And then you'll be in a situation where you're forced to upgrade your plans because your house is using iTunes inefficiently. You can make things really efficient by downloading once on a computer and then using the iTunes on that computer to sync to your different mobile devices. And this is a wise thing to do, particularly if you have children because they like to watch the same thing over and over. You certainly don't have to do this. If you have large download limits on your mobile devices and on your Wi-Fi at home, then you can simply purchase in iTunes, set the settings and let it all download to the multiple devices in the background. So you can use iTunes to buy content. We've established that. You can also use iTunes to import your own content. So for example, you can rip a CD or a DVD on your computer and then bring it into iTunes and use iTunes to sync that content to your different mobile devices. So hopefully that gives you a basic understanding of what you can use iTunes for. In the next videos, I'll show you how you can do some of the things that we've spoken about and it will all start to make sense to you. 